Hey students, we're going to look at question one today, and we're going to move into stationary points and the nature of these points, all right? So a quick recap, when we have a stationary point, this is a point in our curve or graph whereby the dy over dx value is zero, all right? But unless we take a step further, we are able to tell whether this uh, point is a maximum, minimum, or is it a point of inflection, all right? So there are a total of three different types of stationary points. You have your minimum point, right? Your maximum point, as well as a point of inflection, which could either be upwards or downwards, all right? So there are two tests that we can actually do to determine the nature of these points. Today, we'll focus on using the second derivative test, all right, to find this out. So first and foremost, let's proceed by differentiating the given curve function first. So we have dy over dx equals to 6x squared minus 6x minus 12, all right? So this is our first derivative, and in order to find our stationary points, we will set this to be equals to zero. And we will go ahead to solve for our x value. Now we can make the function a bit easier by dividing throughout by six. So that's what we will do. So dividing by six throughout the entire function, we will obtain a simpler function that is x squared minus x minus two equals to zero. So at this point, always we can either use our quadratic formula or we can simply use our usual method of cross product to find our answer. If you insert the values in. All right, and the values that we can use if we want to obtain negative x would be negative two and one. Okay. Let me just um, separate this so that it isn't so cluttered. Okay, so the values that we have after using our cross product will be x minus 2, x plus 1 equals to 0. Okay, so if we solve the two equations here using the zero product rule, we will be able to find the two x values. So what we have is x equals to 2 or x equals to negative 1. So these are the two x values for our two existing stationary points. And we will sub them into the curve equation to solve for the y coordinates and, the, and therefore have the entire point. All right. So what we have over here is uh, y equals to 2. Okay, bracket. 2 cube. All right. Minus 3 bracket 2 square minus 12 times 2 minus 6, all right? And if we solve this, we will have 16 minus 12 minus 24 minus 6, okay? So 4, negative 20, and negative 26 is our y coordinates for this, okay? And for x equals to negative 1, we will have y equals to 2, negative 1 cubed, minus 3, negative 1 square, minus 12 times negative 1, minus 6. Okay, so we have negative 2. That will give us a negative 3 value as well. Plus 12, minus 6. Okay, so negative 5, negative 11, we have 1 over here. So our two stationary point coordinates are given by 2, negative 26, as well as negative one, one. All right, so we have solved the first part of the question. Okay, but we also have to find the nature of these points. And using this second derivative, we can actually find, all right? So let's differentiate our function a second time to obtain this. So let me just zoom out a bit so we can look at all the values at the same time. We have, d square y over dx squared, okay, equals to 12x minus 6. So this will be our second derivative. 
she will use to find and see whether our stationary point is any of those that we spoke about just now. So we'll sub in uh, the two values of x, okay? So we can say when x equals to two, all right, d square y over dx square equals to 12 times two minus six, okay, so give us 18, which is more than zero. So if it's more than zero, we can say that x equals to two. Okay, I'm just gonna write it here. Therefore, x equals to two is a minimum point, all right? Similarly, when uh, x equals to negative one, our second derivative will be equals to 12 times negative one minus six, which gives us negative 80, which is less than zero. So with this, we can conclude x equals to negative one is a maximum point. All right, so think of that. When our second derivative is uh, larger than zero or positive, our point will be a minimum point. On the other hand, if our second derivative gives us a negative value, all right, our point will be a maximum point. So how this looks like visually, okay, in our curve will be that. Okay, we may not be sure of how the curve exactly looks like, but what we can do is to do a rough sketch. We know that there are two values, a negative one and a value at two as well. So, which means that over here, a negative one, there will be a maximum point. So, the curve is probably something like this. Okay. Uh, over here, negative at two, we will have a minimum point. Right? So, this point here is our negative one, one. This point here will be two, negative 26. So, that's how visually it will look like if we were to sketch it out roughly. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do a quick summary of the methods used for this question. So first and foremost, to find our stationary point, we will let our dy over dx be zero. And from there, we can find the x coordinates and we sub them into our original function to find our coordinates of our stationary points. And the next thing we will do to find the nature, in this case, we apply the second derivative test by differentiating our function at second time and subbing in our x coordinates of stationary points to see whether it is more than zero or less than zero. And from there, we can conclude the nature of these two points. All right. So in a separate video in future, perhaps we'll be covering our first derivative test in a case where our second derivative test is not conclusive or gives us zero. All right. So as usual, to check out our products, our guidebooks and our AA assessment kit. All right. And follow us on our social media, Facebook, Instagram, and Telegram. Have a good day.